Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Las Vegas Raiders Insider Podcast. Great Wednesday to you. Thanks to everybody who came out to the San Antonio meet and greet last night. Now, listen, I am really excited about this podcast. Probably, to be very honest, a little bit more excited than I've been for one in a long time, and I enjoy doing them. You all know that. But these two guys are members of the UK, United Kingdom Parliament. It would be uh, equivalent to a House of Representative members in, in the United States. And huge Raider fans. Now, they live near each other. They're neighboring constitu uh, constituencies, neighboring districts. So the first one I'm introduce you to, look at them wearing the Raiders hat. Just representing in Glasgow, Scotland, the, the great... Devin, uh, Gavin, excuse me, not Gavin, uh, Chris Stevens. And Chris, I'm, I'm, I'm saying it right, correct? Yes, you are. Okay. Remember what Winston Churchill said. We are two people separated by a common language. <laughs> That's true. And then Gavin Newlands is from Renfrewshire, Scotland, which is next door to Glasgow. We are so glad to have them both here. Chris and, and and Gavin, thank you for joining us. We're going to get into it. I want to hear from you guys how you became Raider fans, your thoughts on the Raiders being all the way. But before we go, I've got to tell you this story. So in 1999, I'm speaking in London. And I, I, I had gotten my suspender caught on something at the hotel. And I apologized to the people. I said, my suspender broke. And the whole crowd went, I found out later, suspenders over there are not the exact same as here. <laughs> yes. And, uh, no, not quite. <laughs> braces. I think braces are cold over here. Yeah. So anyways, I've got some friends that live in Scotland, so it's great to talk to you guys. You're big Raider fans. Let's just start with you first, Chris. How did you become a Raider fan? How long have you been a Raider fan? Share everybody that story. Well, it's, it probably started uh, when American football started to be shown uh, in the UK. And that started with a programme called World of Sports that used to be on on a Saturday afternoon. They covered a whole range of uh, sports. And one Saturday, they were showing the highlights of the Super Bowl. And it was a Super Bowl in which the Raiders beat the Redskins, the Ren Redskins and that wonderful 74-yard run from the great Marcus Allen. So... Uh, that's where it started. Uh, and then um, Channel 4 um, started showing uh, American football highlights. And that's really developed. Uh, the coverage is, uh, in the UK has uh, developed, uh, particularly with Sky Sports. So um, we get the NFL Red Zone on a Sunday. We get uh, a match on. Um, if the, the Raiders are on, say, Monday Night Football, we would get that live. So I would stay up to watch that. And also, I've got relatives in California who uh, are major. Uh, so for me, it's natural to support the Raiders. And uh, I've been following them through thick and many thins since then, Honda. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Gavin, how about you, buddy? Well, I, I, a slightly similar story, but Chris is a couple of years older than me. Um, he did attend the same school as me, as it happened, just by coincidence. We didn't, we didn't know each other at that point. Uh, but my dad was a big American football fan, and he was a LA Rams fan. And so, being from Scotland and thinking the rivalry will be within the city, um, you know, obviously in Glasgow, for instance, you have Rangers and Celtic. I assumed that the LA Raiders were the rivals to the LA Rams, so I decided to support support the LA Raiders to try and get one over my father. Um, sadly, I quickly realised that the Raiders were not the rivals of the Rams, but my choice was made. Um, and I've been following the Raiders <clears throat> um, ever since. Uh, Bo Jackson would have been my favourite player at the time. But Channel 4, um, as Chris mentioned, was a, a huge influence on a lot of UK American football fans. Um, their coverage during the kind of mid-late 80s um, and early, early 90s was, was fantastic and brought the game to a lot of people. I, I also subsequently went on to watch domestic American football in, in Scotland. I used to follow a team called the Glasgow Lions as well and then many years later we had the uh, Scottish Claymores in the World League or NFL Europe as well but we may get into that later Awesome, alright guys so let me ask you is Jermaine Illuminor your favourite Raider obviously because he comes from the UK or who's your favourite Raider, let's start with you Gavin Oh it's got to be Max 
<clears throat> how can how can it not be Max Crosby? Um, just the sheer effort and will he puts into every play, as well as being just an outstanding player. Um, it's the that leadership by example, um, which marks him out not just from this team, but from uh, but I suppose for for the decades now I've been watching the Raiders, he, he really stands out. So Max Crosby for me. How about you, Chris? Oh, well, uh, I think Crosby and defence, but for me, it's Jacobs. It, it reminds me of the the, uh, the lineage of uh, Bo Jackson and Marcus Allen, and I hope that we keep them. So um, I know it's uh, free agency coming up, but um, and I think you've mentioned this in previous podcasts, because I do listen to your podcast, Hondo, um, yeah. uh, that uh, hopefully AP will find a way of keeping Josh. Yeah, I think they're going to be able to come. I mean, if I had to make a guess, I'm not reporting it as final, but I do believe that both parties want to be together. And you guys know, being politicians who have to make deals, when both parties want there to be an answer, that certainly makes it a lot easier to find one. All right, I want to go in a little bit of a different direction. Chris, I want to start with you. Obviously, Antonio Pierce gets the job. What is your thoughts on the state of the Raiders, where they are today? I'm very encouraged, uh, and certainly a lot more encouraged than I was this time last year, to be honest. Um, I think that um, what AP does is that he he brings out what it means to be a Raider. Um, he's a very tough, tough defence, uh, a player's coach. So I'm very encouraged of what's going to happen. Uh, obviously, we've got the draft and free agency coming up. Uh, the speculation uh, that certainly we're picking up is that Raiders are going to move up in, in, in the draft. We see that. And we get to see the draft uh, now. So in the last couple of years, Sky Sports show that live. So we get to see all of that as well. So I'm very encouraged with uh, what I'm saying with EP. And I was absolutely delighted he had got the job. I didn't do the victory plunge like the victory plunge guy on Twitter. Um, but certainly I was very, very happy uh, to see that uh, AP got the job. And it looks like he's, he, he's putting together um, a good uh, coaching staff as well, which is very important because it's not just the head coach. The head coach, I think you, you've explored this before, the head coach is a leader and there are other specialist coaches as well. He seems to be building a good team. And it might be that we, we, uh, we get Hugh Jackson back. But certainly what encourages me is that a lot of the coaching staff have had uh, in the past some association with the Raiders so they know what the Raiders is about and what Raiders football is about. How about you, Gavin? Yeah, I think Chris is right. I think had you asked me after five games of even last season um, under the previous disastrous regime, I would have thought that you might be looking at a semi-rebuild um, for the Raiders. Just that's that, that had that feel about it. Um, but I think AP results and the performances towards the end of last season um, highlighted that the squad's actually, or the roster, I should say, to use the American term, is actually nowhere near as bad as as it's painted. If you listen to um, um, other NFL experts, they had the Raiders um, uh, down pretty low in their expectations for last year. But I think towards the end of the season, you could see that the defence certainly, um, barring one or two pieces, is in a really, really good place, particularly with Patrick, com well, hopefully coming back um, under AP. But obviously, the, the main issue we have is what to do at quarterback. Um, now, that's, that's the question. Um, I'm a little higher on Aiden than, than others, um, but at the same time, do I want to kind of roll into next season with Aiden as your, your number one? I'm not sure. So I, th I would like to see us go up as high as we can in the draft, um, take the best QB we have and let them fight it out in, in, um, before the season starts and we'll see how we go on. Mm -hmm. hmm. So, Gavin, this next question, we're going to start with you, then go to Chris. I recently learned that if the Raiders want to get to number one, it's going to cost them three number one picks and three number two picks. Now, if they decide that there are two foundational generational quarterbacks in there, then they can go to two, but I'm hearing Washington is not going to move. If there's three, they can go to three, but if they think there's two and we, and we know that Washington won't move, they've got to get to one. Here's my question for you. As a Raider fan, if they're not 100% sold, you mentioned you want them to move up. Are you for them moving up if the cost is three ones and three twos, if they if they know they can get a generational quarterback? What's your opinion? Uh, if they're really sure 
then it, it, it's probably worth it. My only issue is I'm not overly convinced on Drake May and I, I wouldn't really want to bet the house um on Drake May. If if you're if you're going to get one of the other two guys, uh, Jaden, um, etc., I would I would I would probably go for it because for years now we've we've bust it in the first round. We've had terrible first round picks for years, so therefore uh, why not gamble a little and uh, invest some of those picks and try and get our generational QB? But I'm not sold in Drake May. That'd be my only caveat. <laughs> okay. How about you, Chris? Yeah, I think so. Um, uh, for for a couple of reasons, if we don't do it, someone else might. And that yes. other team that might do it is the Broncos, which ironically my wife supports. So um, the the Broncos Raiders games are always uh, good in my household, Hondo. They're always uh, there's a bit of a uh, rivalry there. But a team like the Broncos uh, would pay that price if the Raiders don't. Uh, and you know sometimes uh, in in uh, in sports the price you have to pay is is a price you have to pay in order to yeah. to uh, get ahead. And I think that we need to do, probably need to do that, because the AFC West has always traditionally been a very hard division. But I think it's even more difficult now. Yeah. Mm. Gavin, is your wife a Raider fan or another team? Uh, my wife um, couldn't care less about American football, Hondo, sadly. Um, although it, it does only me, she does leave me in peace on a, a late Sunday evening um, over here when the games start, because the games obviously. They start around 6 p.m. here. Sunday night football starts at 1 a.m. So it's a bit of a long slog. Because the Raiders do get a, a fair amount of, of primetime games. So so Chris and I are, are up quite late through the night watching watching the Raiders. All right. Now, I need both of you to send me your addresses because I'm going to send you both a gift for being on the program. But, Chris, I'm going to send your wife a Broncos rally rag from when they played the Raiders. So I'm going to send her this from Bronco Stadium. So it even says right on there, Denver versus the radio, the Raiders and all that. So I'm going to send that to your wife as a present. All right, guys. I'm going to ask you just two more questions and I'll get you out of here. I know you're on a, on a schedule. Let's look at the Raiders. If you are looking at this team, what are your expectations for next year? I think it's a fair expectation to expect the Raiders to be in contention for that playoff spot and to be over 500. That's where I'm looking at for this team. Over 500 in contention for the playoffs. Let's start with you, Chris. What are your expectations? Yeah, I think playoffs. Um, you have to win 10 games, uh, I think, realistically, to get to the playoffs. Particularly in the AFC, um, the NFC tends to be if you win nine, you might make it. But I think, realistically, you have to win 10 games in order to get to the AFC playoffs. So, uh, absolutely, that's the first expectation. Two, if they come to the UK again, that'd be a great expectation because I have my flag from the Bears game at the at the Spurs Stadium, so I have that. I've I have that in my office, uh, hanging up. It was great to see them uh, at uh, uh, a few years back uh, beating the Bears, and um, so so that's the the, the uh, expectations for me. And to win a playoff game, I think it's been far too long since we won a playoff game. How about you, Gavin? Yeah, I, I think we'll definitely get a chance next year. Obviously, the, with the caveat being the West is now just chock full of talent and at both the coaching level and QB, etc. Um, so it's a it's a tough old division. But obviously, AP um, was over five hundred against. The, in fact, it was three and one. I think wasn't it toward uh, the end of the season against the division. So we've got nothing to fear um, going up against the division. Harbour adds another dimension certainly to the to the West next year. Uh, but I, I think we should be certainly over five hundred and in contention for the playoffs. Um, but it is a tough ask, and it's a, still AP's. It'll be AP's first full year. Um, so I'm, I'm hopeful, but I'm certainly not expecting him to to win a division, um, or, um, or anything like it. But I still think we should be there or thereabouts over five hundred. And uh, the Chiefs are looking a little well, Super Bowl champions. They might be, but they're not quite as they were. Um, so we'll see how see how they bounce back from the offensive frailties next year as well. All right, guys. My next question, and you're both politicians, so you can answer this. Um, I have asked a lot of NFL players. Now, Gavin, I know you got to go soon, so I'm going to get this question to you first. And if you got to run, I get it. Um, I 
by the way, in case you're wondering, Gavin's sitting at the airport waiting to catch his next plane. But my 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 quick question is: I know long term the NFL would like to have teams in Europe, but that's a long ways away. And one of the things you hear from players is, I don't want to pay the taxes. That Europe's taxes are a lot higher than America's. And you see it in America now where players don't want to go to California, but will come to Nevada because there's no state income tax. I'm just curious. Do you think there is a market in Europe for American football teams from the NFL? And do you think wherever it goes that European governments would work so that it would not be cost prohibitive for Americans to come there and play? Let's start with you, Gavin. Yeah, it's a good question. I think um, I think a European franchise would be a great idea. I do understand the point about the taxes. Um, one of my hats is that I'm also the sports spokesperson for my party down at Westminster as well. So I've had to deal with um, some bits of legislation that deals with um, sports um, taxation because for one-off events, whether it's Olympics, um, European Athletics Championships, whatever it happens to be, there is one-off um, taxation allowances for participants um, in those in those games. So there is a precedent there in terms of one-off events. And for people who are based over here, for the team being based over here, that is a, a different question, uh, but certainly one that's worthy of debate. I'm not not convinced it would be as straightforward as you as you might hope, Pondo, but it, um, we certainly give it a go. If, if, the, if the result was a, a franchise, NFL franchise came over here, uh, we'd certainly try. What do you think, Chris? I, I think there's a, a couple of uh, sides to that. So uh, American football, as you would call it, or NFL, is very popular in the UK and Germany. Huge uh, crowds for those games. Um, and Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, uh, which you guys would call a soccer team, the the NFL pitch is actually underneath the soccer pitch. So the soccer pitch wheels out and the NFL pitch is there. Um, so there's a stadium ready for that. Uh, I think the difference between European sports and American sports is that European teams tend to own their stadiums or buy their own stadiums, whereas in America it seems to be um, that they would go to a city and say, you build the stadium for us. So I think that that's a difference. Uh, but there's certainly a market for it. I know Jacksonville Jaguars is a team that's been allocated to uh, the UK um, and we've done some work with them, um, with the, the American Football All-Party Parliamentary Group that we're involved in. So they, they've uh, come in to describe the activities they're doing to promote the Jaguars and <coughs> excuse me, the NFL uh, going forward. So there's definitely a market for it. Uh, I think there's almost certainly that that would be the case. I think it is a pity that the NFL Europe did uh, stop because Gavin was mentioning the Claymores games there. The Claymores were popular in Scotland. Uh, the German teams uh, played to big crowds as well. So I think that it is expanding because although Kansas City Chiefs call themselves the world champions, you know, it's essentially all American teams, isn't it? It's in the NFL. There's no other, there's no other teams. Well, guys, I'm hoping the Raiders eventually get to London. I'd love to meet you both. I'll buy the pint and I'll buy dinner. I want to buy some good shepherd's pie for you because we don't get good shepherd's pie over here. So I'll take you out for shepherd's pie and a pint on me. Last question. Have you seen the popular show, Ted Lasso? I haven't, no, sorry. Yeah. Oh, have you seen it, Gavin? I've seen some episodes, yeah. I haven't seen it all. So it's about a European yeah. English soccer team that hires an American football coach at the highest level at the Premier League. It is hilarious. Trust me. I, I, I'm just new to it. So if there's anything in it that's bad, I haven't gotten to that yet. But, man, it's hilarious. <laughs> you guys would love it. Listen, please get me your addresses. I want to send you both a gift for being on. I greatly appreciate you both. It's been great to have you. I'm looking forward to meeting you. And thank you for sharing with Raider Nation all that you guys do. Do you want to share your social media to anybody in case any American Raider fans want to follow you? Do you want to share no, that? I think there are, I think there are a number of Raiders fans who do follow me on those. So it's just at Chris yeah. Stevens. Very simple. It's at what? Yeah, and 
at Chris Stevens. So it's uh, yep. it's very simple. So uh, and I, I know a number of Raiders fans do follow me. So. And how about you, Gavin? Uh, you um, want to tell them? Uh, yeah, uh, one of the highlights uh, of my Twitter life was when the the Las Vegas Raiders followed me. So the, the Raiders actually follow me on Twitter. So I'm um, at Gav Newlands uh, SNP. That's my Twitter or X handle. Uh, but thanks for having us on, Hondo. It's been really enjoyable, and and keep up the good work. with keep all the content coming for, uh, for those who's now said the point. Yeah, we, we well, love I the pre- deep dives. We uh, do- love the deep dives, Hondo. Um, it always helps explain exactly what's going on, uh, behind the scenes. And I think that, that there's some excellent articles that you put together. Thank you, my friends. We got another deep dive coming. We're working on it. it's going to be a big one. This one's going to be our first ever three parts. It's so big. It's going to take three different articles to tell you. So we're looking forward to it. So to our friends from Scotland, we raise a pint and say thank you for joining us, gentlemen. And I hope that you, you've you enjoyed yourself. We appreciate all of you. Thanks for tuning in to the Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation, Las Vegas Raiders one Insider. Oh, one, note, one last thing. Yeah. Ra- all right. He threw a Raiders in there. All right. I don't know if you heard it, but my wife's in the other room. She yelled it back. So there you go, Chris. Thanks, guys, for being on. We appreciate you.